Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Keith, and I've got a question for you. Have you ever been on holidays, whether it be an all-inclusive or a cruise or, or whatever, and you've been away for a while, and then you get back, and you've got to do the laundry, and you've got to mentally prepare to go back to work or go back to school, and then you think to yourself, I need a vacation from my vacation? Well, if the answer is yes, hold on to that for just a moment. Ladies and gentlemen, of course, I'm here for my view from the 40, and before we get into it, I've got a couple of points of, uh, of acknowledgement. The first one being to Greg, the wonderful OSEG ticket rep who helped us get field level seating tonight. Now, of course, I've been a season ticket holder since day one. I've always had the same seats, but we wanted to try out field level seating. And for those not in the Ottawa area, you have to appreciate this. This is the opportunity of, you know, being right down field level and it's a wonderful experience. Not something I need to do every game, but it was a lot of fun. They bring you like tons of food. Like I totally used up all of my Weight Watchers points tonight. It was a great time. So thanks to Greg for that. And anybody who's coming to a Red Blacks game, if you have the chance, definitely try uh, a field level game. So that's number one. Uh, number two, not a name drop, but a shout out. Darren Joseph, wonderful seeing you today. Darren Joseph, you know, this is a guy who played for Ottawa, this is a guy who played for BC. This is a guy who is just exemplifies class. He's a, a fantastic CFL alumni, now a broadcaster, uh, among other things, and just fantastic individual, so great seeing him. Last and certainly not least, I wanna recognize the Ottawa Red Blacks cheer and dance team. I usually mention them, I talk about their wonderful performances, I talk about their wonderful community work. Today I wanna to talk about their class. Um, unfortunately, this week, we lost a member of the CFL family. Uh, Mary, uh, a lady that danced for the BC Lions Felines team, lost her battle with cancer. And to show support, uh, the Red Blacks had one of their pom-poms that, uh, that were the color, the BC Lions colors of orange and black. And I thought, what a phenomenal tribute to Mary. And I thought that was just so incredibly touching. That not only shows the level of class and dignity that this team has, but it also shows once again that the CFL is really about community and we all are, you know, as much as we might wear our different colors, that we all care about each other. So kudos to them. Uh, I started this off by asking you about vacation because the Red Blacks were on a bye and coming back after the bye, it doesn't look like they were ready to play football yet because they were clearly still in vacation mode. The only person putting up points tonight was the kicker. And when the kicker is the only person putting up points, you got problems. Now, let's talk about the overall. The overall is Ottawa still first in the East. The overall is, is that Ottawa doesn't need to win 17 games to win the Grey Cup. Quite frankly, we've seen that Calgary over the last few years has been out and out the most dominant team in the regular season. Doesn't help them in the Grey Cup as they go and they usually lose to Toronto, Ottawa. So... As much as the regular season, you want to see your team do well, it's really all about the playoffs. I hear people always saying, oh, the CFL season starts after Labor Day. That's adorable, and it's a nice way to plug the Labor Day games, but it's inaccurate. The CFL season starts in the playoffs. You want to make sure that you get to the playoffs. You want to make sure that you're competitive in the playoffs, that, you know, preferably healthy in the playoffs. But I am mildly concerned about what happens up until the playoffs. Obviously, you want to make sure you get in. But once you're in, I have seen third place teams go and go on to win the Grey Cup. So the whole, oh, it all starts now? No, it doesn't. But there are concerns. First of all, Kyrie's Hey Bear. Yeah, I'm calling out your name. What in the world was with that late, dirty, helmet to helmet hit? I heard a lot of people booing, and you know what? This won't, won't be very popular. But I wasn't one of them. I was like, what in the world were you doing? I wasn't sure if you had a beef with this guy, if it was just adrenaline. His momentum was taking him out of bounds and it was a ridiculous hit. I'm interested to see what the CFL, if anything, does about it. Will there be a fine? Will there be a suspension? It'll be very interesting to see because, again, being field level, it was pretty clear the sound of that helmet bashing into that guy. And I'm glad that Cunningham was okay. But... There's no, there's, there's no need for that. And it was just a, a despicable, dirty hit. The other thing was late in the game, so Ottawa's got the ball on Montreal's uh, three-yard line. They're down by 10 points. Down by 10 points with little time to go. They need two scores. First down, they throw the ball. Second down, they throw the ball. Third down, they throw the ball. And guess what? They came up empty-handed. 
So here's my thing. I just had like Marshawn Lynch in my head saying, run. You have got the second best running back in the CFL in your backfield. Why are you not handing the ball? Why are you not giving the ball to Powell? Like is Powell on a timeout? All you had to do was give the ball. And let me tell you something. When you didn't run it on first down, you were kind of in a position where it's like, okay, maybe we'll run it on second down, but no, then you went for the pass didn't work again by third down you had no choice but to go for the pass because it was a bit of a bit of a gap to make up but the play calling just made no sense to me so we can blame the offensive coordinator we can blame Harris we can blame anybody we want to to make ourselves feel good but at the end of the day not the best play calling and with, with all due respect even let's say they got that touchdown no guarantee they're going to get the field goal in the next few minutes to, to tie the game so here's the interesting thing that I find. When Ottawa wins, and let's say, for example, one of those plays had worked and they'd got the touchdown, <clears throat> and they'd come back and somehow won the game, everybody loves Elizondo, the coordinator, everybody loves Harris. But when they don't win, we don't like this, we don't like that. Look, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna fl flip flop and jump on and off the bandwagon. I'm 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 in it with the Red Blacks. But Tonight was not a good showing. This was uh, a game that was a complete contrast from the Winnipeg game. And listen, we can blame people, but you know who I'm going to blame? The 2018 CFL season. Because as a whole, this has been extremely bizarro land. Would anybody have predicted that Calgary was going to lose their undefeated record to Saskatchewan? Nope. Was anybody going to believe that BC was going to lose their undefeated uh, record at home to Saskatchewan? Nope. Was anybody going into this game thinking that the worst team in the Eastern Division, a team that Ottawa has already beaten two times this year, was going to come in here and beat Ottawa by 10 points? Nope. Victim of circumstance. That is what the Ottawa Red Blacks and a lot of the teams in the CFL are dealing with. So this year, the, the winner of the Great Cup won't even be like your Great Cup champion. It'll just be the person who was able to deal with the crazy circumstances that is the 2018 CFL season. So... Ottawa, get it together. Uh, next week, going into BC is not going to be an easy game. That is going to be two teams that are desperately looking for a win, and I can't wait to see it. Uh, I would love to know what you guys thought about tonight's game, so feel free to reach out to me. Uh, CFL underscore fan on Twitter. Facebook.com slash Witty Whittier and Witty Whittier.com. Thank you so much for checking this out. My name is Keith, and that's my view from the 40.